My parents have been married since they were 18. They're still married. Um, I have two sisters. My parents were really young when they had me. My uh, dad actually works in law enforcement. You know, honestly, me and my mom never really got along, but we still don't. You know, I don't want to say that that caused me to do anything I did or make any mistakes that I made, but it's definitely hard when you don't have a strong relationship with your mother. My, uh, my best friend committed suicide when we were 13. That was really, really hard. Um, I already was kind of weird and awkward, and, and uh, she hung herself, you know, and that was really hard for me to deal with. It still is. Everything changed that day for me. Everything. She was one of the few people that understood me and got me, and, you know, it was nice to have somebody that you connected with that had kind of the same issues that I did as a kid. You know, I had a lot of emotional issues and um, depression since it's as long as I can remember. You know, I was pretty much medicated from the time that that event happened. So I wasn't mad at her, you know, I understood it. To understand somebody's pain in that manner and to, to almost in a way just be like, man, you know, I don't even want to be here anymore either. So it just, you just understand how certain people feel and then they're gone and you understand their choices, whether or not it's right or wrong and definitely don't condone suicide. You know, especially not at 13, but I understood the decision that she made. Very, very much so. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be here. And um, I mean, I've always been kind of rebellious by nature, but I definitely think that um, certain certain things in my personality started to, to come out a little bit more. I was angry, I was pissed off. Um, I didn't, you know, God, I was just angry. I was angry at everything, you know, and then I went to church and they were making, fun of people there was this other guy like not even two months later and I used to go to church all the time and he shot himself in the head you know he's the only guy I hung out with church like within a month of that you know and they were talking about how they were glad he was dead and he was a faggot it really bothered me so I kind of became very anti-religion anti-social anti-anything you know I was 13 years old and here are two people that I related to have taken their own life, so I'm just kind of here, I'm like, okay, whatever. I was about 13 when I first started to experiment or use drugs, and it started off simple stuff, like I started smoking weed, and, um, taking acid, drinking a whole lot in excess. I didn't, you know, it wasn't constant, but it was as much as I could. You know, as much as I possibly could get my hands on drugs, I was gonna use drugs. I actually worked in the same place for like 14 years. I worked at a place, um, like a sandwich shop, and, and I actually started managing when I was 16. I was, I was very functional. You know, I could drink and I could smoke weed and I could go to work. Nobody know, you know? And then I was on medication as well, really heavy narcotic medication. So it wasn't out of the, you know, it was just something I'd been doing. They already medicated me at such a young age. So I was used to my being able to alter my mind with a substance. So it didn't seem like it was a bad idea or was doing anything wrong. It just seemed like, you know, I was doing what I was doing. And then I got introduced to meth when I was 28. And um, first time I did it, I don't believe I stopped for three years. It was just, bam, continuous. First time I got arrested was actually because I fell asleep on my car, in my car um, in, in a Walgreens. Yeah, that was the first time. And I forgot to pay a taillight ticket. They didn't search my car, so I didn't get any drug charges. But I went to jail for a taillight ticket. Then I got arrested maybe two or three weeks later for the shoplifting charge. I mean, the police arrested me. I had 100 syringes, scales, bags. I was homeless, so I had all my stuff and belongings. And all they arrested me for was a pair of $2 sunglasses on my head, which I had the money for. I knew I was going to lose my job. You know, it was almost like I could see this guy's, you know, like, okay, I can't pay for the kids. I can't do this. I can't do that. I felt horrible. A friend was like, try this, you know, I did it. And I felt great. Everything was great. Well, I stayed in the house after I had to, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to pay the rent. I, um, 
talked to my kid's dad, who I don't really get along with, and said, hey, look, can you take them? And I tried to get in a program immediately. Six-month waiting list. It's a homeless prevention program. Had three kids, and I was like, just keep them for six months. I stayed in the house a couple of weeks when I wasn't supposed to. I mean, I was pretty much homeless. There was no electricity. There was a lot. I was candles everywhere. I left there. I just stay where I could. Sometimes, most of the time, in my car. I'd fall asleep a lot in my car. I think once I, you know, I was kind of everywhere. Then that's when I started using other drugs intravenously, such as heroin, and you know, and I'd move out of one place and. You know, it wasn't even really living anywhere. You were literally like you had a couch or a garage or uh, you could park your car in the driveway and sleep there. But if I could stay up all night and stay going, then it wouldn't matter because I didn't have to worry about anywhere to sleep. So my children, not just even me, but my children since all this has happened have had to do the same thing I'm doing, live with and stay with whoever is willing to give them an opportunity and a chance to be there. And that breaks my heart, because I want more than anything to have them with me. You know, I go to school and I work. I mean, I literally, right now, if you said, hey, Jessica, give me your right leg and I will give you a house where you can pay rent and have your kids, I would do it. I mean, I wouldn't even flinch. The way I found out about Georgia College is I went to purport to have felony probation for the first time and there was a flyer up on the Bolton board and it was blue and just said the little wheel on it said Georgia Calls and different requirements. So I took a picture of it and I saved it in my phone and this sounded like something that could help me change my life. And I went to my interview and um, I didn't have a car so I got a ride there. And I was just so like, oh my God, these people are just gonna think I am a wreck. I am a disaster. I got left my interview, I'm crying, I'm starving. I left my phone. I'm trying to hide outside so nobody can see that I'm still there because I don't have a ride home yet. I mean, and I'm talking to the other participants and I'm like, blah, 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 blah. You know, like, oh, they're gonna totally not want me here. And, I was just so upset. It was a total disaster, but I was insanely honest. I got home and I was like, oh, this was horrible. Like, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm saying that. That's what he would think. I'm like, this did not go well at all. Like, it was the worst ever. <laughs> I have to laugh about it. I mean, I laughed, I cried, I cussed, I got left behind. I just tried to hide outside. I wouldn't quit talking. It was so bad. Jeez, I still don't know why Mark hired me. <laughs> um, my, fe my first fear was getting to and from work. I came in my first day on onboarding and started crying again. Like, they actually hired me. I called Sheila back nine times. <laughs> like, and then I get there and my baby is like, how am I going to get to and from work? And I'm sitting there through onboarding and I'm crying and they're like, oh my God, what's wrong? And I was like, this is all so good, but how am I going to get here? I was like, I... I can't even get somebody to pick me up and, and drop me off on time. And that is when the program went above and beyond any expectations I could have ever had. Because they paid somebody cast money to bring me to and from work my first week. And that was unbelievable. I was like, is there an ulterior motive here? I mean, am I gonna have to like, you know, do something crazy? like? I mean, I, I still was like, so, you know, I didn't trust anybody and I'm like, there's gotta be a catch. But man, they did and I came to and from work. I promised him I'd give 100% and then my first paycheck I got a car and I showed up early every day. I cannot say enough about the program. Um, it's taught me how to do so many things. I mean, I'm functional now. I haven't used drugs in over a year. I haven't been arrested. You know, when you when you come off of drugs and you come out of a really bad situations and you're so used to everybody doing really bad things to you, just to have people help you get through your day, I mean, it, it's ridiculous how much of a difference that makes. And to learn how to manage and deal with your emotions and be in an environment where it's okay at certain points in time to be able to 
stop what you're doing and talk to somebody about what's going on, you know, and have such a large support group of other people who want to see you succeed, who want to see you do well. I'm in college now. I never thought I'd go to school. I thought I'd be in prison. I thought I would be in prison right now. But being there, you know, I learned to develop goals and to put myself in uncomfortable situations, um, to do things that scare me and to not be afraid. It may not happen tomorrow and it may not happen a month from now and it may not happen a year from now. You know, but as long as I keep going and using the tools that I was given and the things that I was taught and the love and support I was shown, I mean, I haven't stopped yet. What I like most about the program is just the general atmosphere. It's a very understanding, you know, um, people want to help you. Being around people who constantly want to help you and see you do better. Being around people who care about you. Being around people who don't care about your past. Being around people that, in general, just genuinely want to see you succeed. Georgia Calls is the reason <laughs> that, um, that I kept on moving. It's the reason that I didn't give up. Honestly.